Let's talk about Jesus' unlikely team. This team included a tax collector, some fishermen, a zealot, a thief, a doubter, and some other dudes. Squad goals? Maybe not. Matthew the tax collector would have been the political opposite of Simon the zealot. Matthew's life was made cozy by the Roman state, while Simon would have sought to overthrow it. Jesus' unlikely team encompassed a spectrum of economic, political, and professional diversity. And yet, Jesus' invitation was the same. Come, follow me. And so it is ours. But does that mean that following Jesus together will be easy? No. You know, before we go further on this Exodus journey, let's ask an important question about our narrator that may just help us here. Who wrote Mark? Well, glad you asked. We've got to dive into early church history for that answer. A guy named Papias, not Papaya, but Papias, who was a church leader in Asia Minor until about 130 AD, quoted an earlier church leader, maybe even John the Apostle, saying, Mark became Peter's interpreter and wrote accurately all that he remembered. So Mark, here pictured with an apple and hat, wrote down Peter's account of Jesus' life. You all remember Peter, don't you? He's kind of the foot-in-mouth disciple. He's over-eager and mistake-prone in every gospel account. No wonder Mark's gospel paints the disciples quite harshly. I'll let Carson and Moo do the talking. While found in all four gospels, the picture of the disciples as cowardly, spiritually blind, and hard of heart is particularly vivid in Mark. For example, Jesus had just fed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fishes in chapter 6, and as a group of 4,000 gather in chapter 8, the disciples ask, where are we getting bread this time? Come on, guys! Don't you get it by now? The disciples, well, like us sometimes, are a bit thick-skulled when it comes to understanding Jesus. In other words, in the Gospel of Mark, we might say that Jesus is constantly face-palming around his followers. So, how does this help us in our collective desire to follow Jesus? Well, that may be the exact reason Peter highlights how much buffoonery Jesus endured from his team. The genre of Mark holds a clue, as Sharon Dowd asserts. This is a formation narrative for a Christian community, not an evangelistic tract for people who have never heard of Jesus. Just like everyone reading the Exodus accounts realizes how much God's people are short on faith, memory, and character, Peter keeps his retelling humble here. If they had the stuff to follow Jesus, you do too. And as a reader, we are invited to see their failures in a way that holds a mirror to our own. If we are honest with ourselves, we can be as cowardly, spiritually blind, and hard of heart too. Can we, like Peter, follow Jesus with a humbled view of ourselves? What if this journey makes us humbler? Thank you.